Hi everyone, and welcome to the Not Just Another Webinar East Edition series. Today's non-webinar is about 10 Zoom tools that will enhance your next virtual meeting. So I wanna know, what word or phrase comes to mind when you think about Zoom? Throw it into the chat. Is it necessity because you're still working remotely? Is it fun because it helps you stay connected with family and friends? Maybe frustrated or tired because Zoom fatigue is a real thing. Overwhelmed because you still just haven't really had the time to learn Zoom. Um, Zoom is actually a really powerful tool that can do so much more than just show you inside your coworker's home office. But like with any tool, uh, there are tips that can enhance your experience. So let me help you tackle Zoom. Um, here are the 10 tricks I'm going to talk about today. I would love to know which one you're the most excited to hear more about. Uh, our East team is still primarily working from home, and um, so our team uses a lot of these on a daily basis, whether it's a full staff meeting, a one-to-one -one discussion, or even external meetings with our partners and board members. I even use a lot of these when I'm having fun, casual gatherings with family and friends. All of that to say that these tricks can be used by anyone for any type of gathering. So my name is Jessica Dunham and I am the Director of Events at EAST. I am a Zoom fanatic, uh, but I'm not a Zoom expert. So I do frequently utilize the Zoom Help Center. It's chock full of articles and resources with step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and I will share some of those along the way, but I'm, I'm also going to create a link um, or a, a document with a bunch of links that can um, give you quick and easy access to some of the information that I'm sharing today. So I'm going to let you take a walk with me today. I'm going to share my Zoom screen with you so that you can see some of these tips in action and specifically what it looks like from the host perspective. Uh, just know that a lot of these tools that I'm going to show you have to be turned on in the Zoom web portal. Um, before they can actually be enabled to be used in your meetings. So I can show you how to enable some of those settings, but for the sake of time and entertainment value, I'll share a resource document with those links for, for how to turn on and enable the tools um, after this webinar. So I think we're ready to get started. Let's go ahead and um, hop into Zoom so we can see some of these tips in action. Um, all right. First of all, I just want to point out um, this Zoom desktop client. So this is what I utilize to schedule um, and join most of my meetings. So this is the, the Zoom desktop client. This is what I use to schedule and um, start most of my meetings. Just wanted to point that out. We'll, you'll probably see it a little bit later as well. Okay. Let's minimize that. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. So here's me. So, okay, for trick number one, let's just jump right in. Um, did you know that Zoom has a waiting room feature? Uh, you enable it when you're scheduling your meeting um, through that desktop portal that I just had pulled up for the desktop client, not the portal. Um, you enable it through there whenever you're creating your meeting. Um, I've already got this Zoom meeting set up and I've invited a couple of friends to help me out today. So um, they're going to be able to test out some of these features with me. Okay, so the waiting room in Zoom allows you to control who comes into your meetings and when they're allowed in. So it offers increased security. It gives me an opportunity to finish up my slides if I'm not quite done. And I can even have private chats in this meeting um, with other co-hosts or speakers or things like that before I actually let in our attendees. Okay, so let me show you where to access the waiting room. So you go to your participants and you can see I've got four people in waiting. So they're kind of grayed out right now. Um, in, a, in, a, in a Zoom meeting, whenever you have people 
join into the waiting room, you will get a notification on um, the bottom of your screen that says, um, for example, Aaron David is in the waiting room and it gives you the option to admit right from that notification. Or you can just go to the participants list like I did. So um, I, can, um, I can admit them all or I can admit them one by one. I can even send a message to those who are waiting. So let's go ahead and send them a message. Um, hi everyone, I'm about to let you in to the meeting. Okay, so they'll get that notification. Uh, right now what they're seeing is just a blank screen that says something along the lines of, please wait, the host will let you in soon. Okay, I think they've been waiting long enough, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna admit them all. Okay, so everybody's popping in. All right, can everyone hear me? Good, okay, cool. These are all my friends that are hanging out with me today. Um, they're gonna help me show out some of those features and cool tricks. All right, what's next? Okay, so that was your first trick. That was how to um, use the waiting room. The next one is how to rename yourself. So the first thing that our team does, specifically when we have a meeting with external people, is we rename ourselves. So all you do is you right click on your picture or um, your video, whatever is up for you, right click and hit rename. And I'm gonna name myself Jessica East. Okay, and I think on my team, if you guys will go ahead and change your names as well, just so they can see kind of how quickly this takes effect. Um, the, this rename feature is a great tool for branding purposes. Um, it's great for meetings where everyone doesn't know each other to help you make connections. So, for example, maybe you have your name dash your school or your organization. Um, it also can be used for like a fun icebreaker or team building activity. So, for example, maybe people, instead of putting their name on there, they can put... Um, their favorite color or how they're feeling for that day or a project or task that they're working on. Sky's the limit. So I would love to know if you have other ideas for how to utilize this tool. I think it's just super simple and fun um, and a lot of, it's really useful. All right, so, oh, I also wanna mention that you can, in addition to renaming yourself, um, which you can do again on your picture, or you can even go over here to um, your name on the participants list and click more and you can see the rename feature there. But you can also edit your profile picture. So this is my picture. Um, this is what shows whenever um, I have my video turned off. So I'm just gonna ignore that. Hey, Erin, will you turn off your video really quickly? So Aaron has it set up so that he's got this little avatar bitmoji um, character as his profile picture. So that's what shows up whenever his video is turned off. So just another easy thing to do. And again, you can make that change from your video by right clicking on it or over here under the participants list and clicking more. All right, moving right along. So the next one is fun. It's virtual backgrounds. So these allow you to meet from anywhere or at least look like you're meeting from anywhere. To access virtual backgrounds, you will go to where it says um, video down here at the bottom and there's an arrow. You click the arrow and it gives you an option to choose a virtual background. So I'm going to do that. So Zoom has some pre-populated options. Um, you can even Google search and find some great options or you can create your own custom um, virtual backgrounds from photos and videos. Okay, so I want to show you a video that's a really fun background, just so you can see, because I didn't realize that videos could be used as virtual backgrounds. Um, so there, there's this, you can see the waterfalls are behind me, and I actually need to flip my video around because you can see this logo is backwards, so I'm just going to click this mirror my video, and now it looks correct. Okay, so there's that one. Um, I'm also going to, actually, I'm gonna stick with this background. So our communications team created these backgrounds. Um, they're great for branding. So I'm just gonna use this one. Okay, um, I, oh, and I, I'll mention too, I often don't use the green screen feature um, because I don't actually have a green screen. If you had one, that would be great, but I don't. So I don't click that button 
if I do, you can see it kind of goes a little wonky. So I just leave that like it is. All right. Okay, so there you go. So again, um, these virtual backgrounds, they are great for branding, as I mentioned. Um, they're also really great for hiding clutter and any distractions that you might have going on in the background. And they can even be really fun at, for maybe a themed meeting or a birthday party. Um, I've heard of a lot of people doing those. So there's a lot of great uses behind these. Um, have any of you played around with virtual backgrounds yet? I would love to know if you have a favorite one um, and maybe even some other ways that you can in incorporate these into meetings and events. I always love to know those kinds of ideas. So please share in the chat if you have any. All right, speaking of video, um, I wanna point out probably my, my favorite yet simplest trick. Uh, we'll even, I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see a difference because I'm actually wearing makeup today and um, I haven't in a long time, but I'm going to show you. Um, this trick is called Touch Up My Appearance. So again, you'll go back to like your video settings um, and I'll point out that you can access these settings here. So see, it's kind of the same screen. Actually, we were just here on virtual backgrounds. Um, but you'll see all these other settings I have over here that I can access. Um, the one in particular I'm talking about today is under video. So I want to, this, this tool is called Touch Up My Appearance. So it, um, it's great for rooms with bad lighting or if you're like me and you've been up, you know, for a couple of hours overnight dealing with children. Um, this is just a fun little tool. So Again, you can go into your settings through the through the screen down here where it says stop video, the up arrow, you can go into video settings and access it there. But I want to point out that you can also access it through your desktop client. So um, we go here, settings, and then there's that very same screen. So you can do it through the client, but I often just do it through the video screen or the Zoom screen. All right, so let's go in here and actually show you what it does. Okay, so if I click touch up my appearance, a very subtle difference. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. Again, I'm wearing makeup for the first time in several weeks, so um, may not be as much of a difference today as there normally would. But uh, this, is, this is just a fun tool that provides a really soft um, focus for your entire screen. It's a really simple tool that can help you look just a little bit more professional and polished in just a click. And this is one of those tools that once you click it, you can forget it. It's gonna, that setting will apply to any future meetings. Whereas some of these other settings that we're gonna talk about today um, are meeting specific. So you may have to set them up for every meeting that you have, but this one, it's constant. All right, so that was the touch up my appearance. Moving right along, I am going to show you um, two different views. So Zoom has what we call the gallery view, which is this grid style here. Um, but I actually want to talk about the speaker view first. Okay, so again, I accessed it by just clicking on speaker view. Okay, so um, this is the default setting whenever you're in Zoom. Um, the speaker view automatically switches the large video screen, which we see Christian on our screen today. Um, it automatically will switch to the next person who speaks, though. So, um, Adam, can you test this out for me? Yeah, sure. So should we speak in and should we be able to see me on screen? Yeah, there he is. So, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, tool, I guess, if you will. Uh, I will say that if there are several people who are speaking at once, it can get a little bit wonky and the video will jump around because it's trying to pick up on all the different voices. Um, so one, you know, one way around that is possibly just to put everybody on mute except for the main speaker. Okay, so that is speaker view. Um, again, it's really nice because it has this big window. I can very clearly see who is speaking um, and then my, my attention can focus on them. So, but I personally like the gallery view. So this is um, pretty self-explanatory. It's thumbnail um, displays of all participants in a grid pattern. 
there are a limited number of thumbnails that you can fit on your screen. So if you're in a really large meeting, there will be an arrow right over here that will allow you to click over and see the next set of thumbnail photos. So if you're looking for someone in particular, don't forget to scroll over. Um, I really like gallery view because it gives me an opportunity to see facial expressions and some of those nonverbal reactions that are hard to pick up on in a virtual meeting. So this just helps me a little bit. I can kind of take a glance at my audience and see their facial expressions if maybe they're not quite understanding what I'm talking about or if they're agreeing with what I'm saying. It's just my, my preference. Um, but I would love to know, are you a, are you a speaker view fanatic? or do you prefer the grid view or gallery view? I'm gallery all the way. I'll point out something else to you. As a participant, if I'm in speaker view, I can um, pin a video and that basically disables the speaker view from jumping around to different people. So the benefit of that is I still get this really large window here, but let's say for example, um, I just wanna focus on Aaron because I've really missed Aaron and I want to see his face. So I'm going to pin Aaron's video. In order to have this option, though, you have to make sure that the participant's video is turned on. So if it's turned off, you won't see the option to pin it. But since Aaron has turned on his video, I can click pin video and there's Aaron. So, um, Adam, can you say something again for me? Sure. So if I'm saying something. I think Aaron will stay pinned up, right? Yep, yep. So we see Adam's talking, but we can still see Aaron's face. Um, so again, that's just a, another little trick there. Um, a, as a host, you can actually do this same thing. Let me back up a second. As a participant, when I make this adjustment on my screen, it only affects my screen. So for example, if Adam was in speaker view and He's not going to see that Aaron's video is pinned. Only I am because I did that at the participant level. However, there is a way for the host of a meeting to spotlight a, a video, which is essentially the same thing as pinning the video, but it spotlights it for everyone. So I can click Aaron as the spotlight video, and now everyone should see Aaron as the main window in their screen if they're on speaker view, is that right? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> All right, so that is a little bit about the speaker view and the gallery view. And I threw in the pinning and unpinning video. So I'm actually gonna go in, I'm gonna um, cancel the spotlight video and I'm gonna jump back into gallery view because um, that is my preference, at least for the moment. Okay, moving right along. So this next feature, um, it's called push to talk and it allows you to remain muted throughout the meeting and then you would just hold down the space bar when you want to unmute yourself and and talk um, i can't really show you this feature in a webinar setting um, but i'll include more information on that document um, of resources so to enable this setting you would go to the audio tab in your zoom desktop client so again let me find my mouse here we go. Okay, so here's my desktop client. I'm going to go into my settings, audio, and you can see that I already have this feature check marked. So it's press and hold space key to temporarily unmute yourself. So you would just click it, go back out, and it should work. Um, this tool is a great, um, a a quick way for you to mute or unmute yourself rather than having to locate your Zoom screen and click on your picture and click mute or unmute. It's just, it takes it a little, it makes it a little bit faster, the, the whole process. Uh, if you've been in plenty of meetings, you've probably seen lots of people um, searching around on their screen trying to find the mute and unmute button. So, Again, I just like to keep this tool in place and then I can just hit that space bar if I wanna say something. Uh, for large meetings, I think I've already mentioned that I would absolutely recommend putting everyone on mute um, to avoid the unwanted background noises. But again, you may have to help some of your participants make sure that this setting is enabled for them um, in their Zoom desktop client. So I will say though, one you know, because one caveat is going to be that uh, people tend to forget that they're on mute. 
um, especially if they've not used this feature before. So you may have to still remind them to unmute themselves. It's just one of those caveats with the, with the virtual meeting setting. All right, so that was the push to talk tool. And we are officially um, over halfway through my list of tricks. Um, so what's your favorite so far? I would love to know um, in the chat. So these next couple of tools um, are what I would consider to be attendee um, and engagement, attendee engagement tricks. Um, I have no doubt that many of you have been in at least one virtual meeting where attendees are all talking over one another and um, it can just get a little bit crazy and difficult. And but these next four tools will really help you out with that. So these are great ways, again, for attendees to interact and offer their thoughts without disrupting the meeting flow. But they're also really great ways to engage all attendees, not just the ones who are openly more outspoken. All right, so trick number seven um, is meeting reactions. So let me show you where those are located. You scroll right down here on the bottom of your screen. See, it's a little smiley face with a plus sign and it says reactions. You click it, you get two options. You get a clap and you get a thumbs up. Um, so this is a way for staff to react to what um, is being said during a meeting by sending a thumbs up or a clap. Um, it allows them to communicate and again, agree or support with what's being said without interrupting and jumping on their microphone. So guys, can you, can you test this out for me? Can you give me some, there we go, see? Over here in the top left-hand corner of their screens, there's a clap, there's a thumbs up. Um, all participants can see these reactions. Again, it's in the top left-hand corner of each person's uh, video screen. And I, I believe they disappear after about five seconds. Um, I think the reactions are enabled automatically on your Zoom, so you shouldn't have to turn off or on any feature, but I'll link to the resource just in case I'm wrong. Uh, by default, all of the reactions have a yellow skin tone, so you notice that all the ones that they posted up were yellow. You can change that if you want to um, make it fit you a little bit better. Again, you would just go to your settings, either through your desktop client or my quick and easy way by going through the little up arrow next to video. So here's your settings. The one you're, you're looking for is in general, and there are the different options to, for you to select your reaction skin tone just a way to personalize it. All right, um, again, meeting reactions are just a quick and easy way to show agreement and support without unmuting, and it works even if your cameras are turned off. You will still see that little clap or handshake pop up. Okay, so similar to meeting reactions is uh, a, a tool called nonverbal feedback. Um, Let's see, for this one, I'm gonna get rid of my chat screen so that we can just see all of my participants. So, um, whoops, there we go. Okay, so um, here are the icons that are available for you to use for the nonverbal feedback. Um, participants can select one of these icons. Um, it will show up next to their name up here at the top. And it's a way for them to communicate with the host and other participants um, in a meeting, again, without really having to jump on a mic or interrupt. Um, so let me show you an example. All right, team, um, I want you to tell me if I need to go faster in this presentation or if I'm talking too fast and I need to slow down. So pick yours, go faster or slow down. Tell me what you think. Okay, Adam says slow down. I talk fast, okay. Slow down. <laughs> Everybody says slow down. Okay, cool. So um, that's just an easy use case if you're presenting a session. Again, I can see specifically who gave me what, um, who clicked what icon, and it even shows me down here at the bottom a, a number of how many people. So it kind of gives you a summary or a breakdown. Well, no, the breakdown is up here, the individual, this down here at the bottom gives you more of a summary. So some different ways you can use this are, um, maybe you wanna poll everybody. So let's try it again, guys. Um, I'm gonna clear all of these icons. Okay, so um, let's go with a yes or a no question. How about, um, do you like meetings, yes or no? Tell me what you think. 
Okay, got a couple of yeses, got a couple of noes, perfect. So again, you can see everybody how they responded individually, or if you're in a really large meeting, again, it gives you a summary down here at the bottom. And then the host would just clear all. Um, it's also these, these nonverbal feedbacks kind of can also give you some insight and, and help you to read your, your room a little bit. So you don't even have to, as a host, you don't have to specifically say, okay, do this or that, show me your nonverbal reaction. It could just be simply that, um, as a, as a participant in a meeting, I realize that I'm not understanding things. I need someone to slow down, but I don't want to necessarily hop on my microphone and say that or throw it into the chat. So I could just throw up the go slower um, icon or feedback option. And if the presenter is paying attention, um, he or she will see it and can kind of, again, get a read of the room. You'll notice there's a more option too. It just gives you a couple more icon feedbacks to pick from. This one is, I've stepped away, I need a break, clap, I agree, I support with what you're saying, and then a like or a dislike feature. So that is how that one works. Um, I believe you guys can see the icons up here too, right on, on the participant list. You can see who said what, okay. So they, so everybody can see it. And again, just another really great tool for everyone to communicate and have their voices heard without necessarily having to interrupt the meeting flow. I don't think, so unlike the meeting reactions, I said this one down here is automatic. I do not think that the nonverbal feedback is automatic. I believe this is something that has to be enabled for the meeting through your Zoom web portal, which I'll show you that in a little bit. It's nothing exciting or else I would have showed it to you by now. Okay, so our team at East tends to use the reactions more so than the nonverbal feedback, um, but I can see use cases for both. So we may have to dive in and, and try out the nonverbal feedback a little bit more. Um, but what do you think? I'm curious to know if this is something that you, you can see yourself using, either one of them. Okay, the next thing is breakout sessions. So, um, this one, this tool is a little bit different than the previous two, but it's still a great strategy for getting all voices heard during your larger meetings. And honestly, it's probably my favorite Zoom tool. I don't know why. I just, I just really like it. I play around with it a lot. Um, but breakout rooms allow you to split a Zoom meeting into 50 separate sessions for discussion, activities, projects, small group work, etc. Um, these sessions can be split up automatically or manually, and you can move people around to different breakout rooms at any time. So let me show you how to set one up. So the breakouts, um, it's down here at the bottom of your screen next to reactions. Mine's hidden under the more option. So here's breakout rooms. I click that. Okay, it tells me I have four participants, not including myself. And so I'm going to split them up into two rooms. Um, I could do it automatically and Zoom would just pick people, but I'm going to do it manually so that I can show you that, uh, that feature. All right, I'm going to click create room. So then it opens up. Here are my two breakout rooms. I actually can go in and rename them. So I'm going to rename this first one to be breakout sessions. Let's pretend that we are planning for our East seminar, which we actually are. So I've got one group that I want to work on breakout sessions, and then I've got one root group that I want to work on logistics. So I'm going to do that. All right. So for breakout rooms, I'm going to say that Jordan and Christian are going to do those. So I would just click next to their name. And then I'm going to have Adam and Aaron. shows that they're the only two left. So click their names. I'm going to put them in the logistics room. So see, I can see where they're at now. You see that I could, you know, maybe I decide I want to move Jordan to the logistics room. So there he is. And now I realize that Christian is by himself. So I think I'm going to move Aaron back to breakout session one so that Christian's not by himself. You can even exchange, which is kind of the same thing um, if you know if you're exchanging person for person. Um, let's see what else feature is in here. Okay. Uh, oh, there's additional control options down here at the bottom. So these will control how attendees can move around, whether they're put automatically into a breakout session room, and if they're allowed to return to the main session at any time. 
It also gives you some options to control how long people are in the breakout room and if they're notified via a countdown timer um, when their time in their room is up. So it's just some additional controls there if you have specific needs for these rooms. All right, I'm going to open all these rooms. So and then I'm going to close this so that you can see everyone is just going to start disappearing. Okay, so now it's just me here. So everyone is in their rooms. Um, they really, they should be working on whatever project or task or activity that I've assigned to them. But there's a couple of features that as a meeting host, you can utilize to communicate and engage with those um, breakout session room participants. So I'll show you some of those. The first one, um, and again, you, to access these, you would just go back to your more breakout session rooms. So I can broadcast a message to all. So it's down here at the bottom. So again, I can see who's in my breakout sessions. Um, I need to send a message to everybody. So let's say um, I'm closing the breakout rooms in one minute. Stay tuned. Broadcast. Okay, so they all should get that message. Um, and actually, I'm going to, to, in, to show you the next feature, which is the request for help feature. Um, I'm going to actually ask someone to help me out. So I'm going to say, Adam, can you click the request help button? So in the breakout rooms, they have a button that can show them how they can request assistance or help. When they do that, you get this notification that says ask for help. Adam in the logistics breakout room has asked for help. So I can either ignore it or I can click join breakout room and it's gonna jump me over to his room. Okay, so here I am. I have joined Adam's room. Um, you see that we have all the same features um, of stopping and starting our video, chatting, recording, all of those things we can still use while we're in our breakout rooms. Okay, you can even hop around to the different breakout rooms. So I'm going to jump over and see what Aaron and Christian are up to. So again, I just open breakout rooms. I find the room I'm looking for and I click join. It's taking a minute. Okay, there we go. All right. So that's how that works. Um, so I'm going to leave this room and go back to the main session. I'm going to leave the breakout room. So it's taking me back to the main session. As the meeting host, I'll probably just hang out in here while people are in their own breakout sessions, unless I really feel like I need to um, jump around and see how everyone's doing or help answer questions or facilitate conversations. I meet myself. Okay. All right, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. So again, open up breakout rooms, close all rooms, and very shortly you should see people popping back in. Perfect. So they're coming back. Um, so these breakout sessions, again, are just a really valuable tool for small group discussions, team building activities. Um, it's a way to engage all voices in a meeting. Um, for a lot of people, small groups are less intimidating and it um, gives you more opportunity to, to hear people talk versus a large meeting. So it's a really great tool uh, if, you, if you have a need for it. And, and I, we use these a lot with EAST when we're working on collaborative team projects. All right. So last one um, is trick number 10 is the share screen. This is nothing new. Most of you have probably seen or used this, um, but it get, it has so many real-time collaboration um, opportunities. So I wanted to be sure to include this one. So share screen gives you uh, many ways to engage with meeting participants. Um, so many that you may even forget that you're in a virtual meeting. The host can control who can share. So you would just click this up arrow um, I can de decide I only want one person to share at a time or I want multiple people to be able to share. Um, there's even advanced sharing options that you can go into and just having having more control as a meeting host. Um, so 
I am going to go ahead, let me click share my screen so you can see some of the different features in here. So there are three options at the top. There's a basic and advanced and files. So under basic is your, is your basic screen share option. So you can share um, your, your entire desktop. You can share a specific application um, and even a whiteboard. And I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute. Under advanced, just gives you a little more personalized features. You can share only a portion of your screen. You can share music or computer sound only. So maybe you want to have um, music playing in the background, but you don't want to see the, the Pandora or whatever other music application you use. So you can just click this button and it will just play the music or sound. Then under files, again, it just allows you to share files between one another. So I'm going to go back to the basic screen because I want to point out this one other feature too. Down here at the very bottom of this of the screen, there is an option to share computer sound. You can see from the little pop-up, it says other participants will be able to hear the audio from your computer and see your shared screen. So I have been in one too many meetings where people have shared their screen and tried to play a video and did not click this check mark, and then you can't hear their video. And it's, it's kind of confusing. I understand why people miss it. So that's why I wanted to make sure to point it out to you down here. So I always just click share computer sound whenever I'm sharing my screen, just because you never know. Um, you never know when you want to play a video or, or something like that. So I always click that option. All right, let's talk about the whiteboard a little bit. So I'm going to go back into my share screen. I'm going to go to the basics whiteboard and share. All right, so the whiteboard is just basically a blank canvas for you and other meeting participants to um, play around with. So there are some annotation tools. And guys, um, I think you should be able to see these. They might be hidden under a video option at the top. Okay, look, someone's found them. Cool. So yeah, you can draw all over it. Everyone can, do, can participate. There are text features. So I could create a text box that says, hey, everyone, here we go. Um, I can even make some stamps. So let's put some fun little stars everywhere. Um, I can erase things. So I'm gonna erase some of those things that I did. Um, and then you can even save this. If you actually do something worthwhile with your whiteboard, you can save it and have it for later. All right, so you can even use those annotation tools on a web page. So let me find one that we can use. Okay, do you see the Zoom Help Center? I hope. Okay, <laughs> so you can use those annotation tools on here too. So you'll see if I roll my mouse to the top, there's an annotate button. I get all these options. I can do my little stamps on this web page. So if you need that for anything, there you have it. All right, stop sharing that. We're all back here now. Okay. So, whew, 10 tools, um, and I've really only brushed over the surface on several of them. So again, I will have all the links in that document that you can dive further into after this webinar. Uh, if you've got a little bit of brain power left, I have actually two bonus tricks that I'm gonna quickly mention. Um, the first one is a host controls. So as a meeting host, you can control various aspects of your meeting, specifically by managing your participants. So I'm gonna open up my participant list to show you how this works. Um, if you hover over each participant, you get several options. So I'm hovering over Aaron right now. You see that he's on mute, but I have the option to ask him to unmute. I can also ask him to stop his video. I can spotlight his video. I can make him the host, allow him to record, um, rename him, put him back in the waiting room, and I can even remove him from my meeting completely. So I can do that with all my participants. And then also down here at the very bottom, these three little dots down here, I can click that and it gives you just some additional options as well um, that will affect all of your meeting attendees, not just the one that you're hovering over. So that's bonus number one. Bonus number two is the Zoom scheduler extension. Um, so this 
So Zoom has multiple um, options for you to schedule your meetings. You can use the desktop client, which is this guy over here. We've played around with a little bit. So you can use that guy. You can use the web portal, which let me show you over here. This is your web portal. Um, or you can use the Zoom extension, which is this little guy right up here. Um, it's the fastest and easiest way to schedule your Zoom meetings. You click on it, you can instantly schedule a meeting or, or I'm sorry, you can schedule a meeting or you can instantly start a meeting with or without video. Um, this extension also allows you to schedule meetings directly from your calendar. So let me pull up my calendar. Uh, let's see. Actually, here we go. All right, so I'm in my calendar. It's thinking a little bit, but I want to create a meeting. So I click the create a meeting button. Once it stops thinking, it should open up. Okay, I'm going to stop here. There it goes. Okay. Start here. All right. So I'm going to click the create button because I want to create a meeting. So, and then I'm going to go into more options. So you see, I can add my title, my date, time, and then I have the option to make it a Zoom meeting. So I would just click that button, um, set up all the, the options, and it will automatically add the Zoom meeting um, link to your calendar. So, all right, let's see. Okay, that's the, that's the Zoom scheduler extension. Um, oh, I should also mention that it's available as an Outlook plugin too. Um, I'll provide some links to both of those, um, the Chrome extension and the plugin in that document. So there's your bonuses. I hope they were worth it. Um, both can save you a lot of time if you use them wisely. All right. I'm going to share my slides with you again. Let me just take a second. There we go. Okay. Just thinking, thinking. All right. So there you have it. There are your um, 12 tricks to tackle Zoom, move this guy over here. There we go. So 12 tricks to tackle Zoom. Um, so I hope again that you've enjoyed all 10 of these and the bonus ones. Um, I would love to know which one you're planning to incorporate into your next Zoom meetings. Um, while you're in the chat, um, please send me any questions that you have. Uh, I'll um, be happy to respond to those um, as quickly as possible. And while you're working on those questions, I want to um, share a little bit of information about EAST for those who might be unfamiliar with us. So EAST is an educational nonprofit headquartered in Little Rock, Arkansas. We put industry grade technology into schools and co-ops and challenge students and other lifelong learners uh, to go out and solve problems that they find in the community or create service projects and figure out how to solve them using technology. With nearly 270 programs spanning across Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Pennsylvania, we provide all learners with the opportunity to have relevant, individualized, and life-changing educational experiences. All right, um, a few last minute disclaimers about Zoom that I just need to share. So, uh, there are different Zoom plans. Um, the tips that I shared today should all be basic features that are included in all of the plans. So, but just be aware that there are different ones. So if you find a really cool feature and you can't figure out why you can't find it, it could be because your plan doesn't match up with what it is. Um, also be aware that, uh, make sure you check out your Zoom, the, the version that you have and check for updates um, frequently. 
I had a, a wonky bug issue the other day that was resolved just by updating my Zoom client. Um, you can manually update that by visiting zoom.com backslash download. And I will include that in the uh, link of resources. Something else to know, and you probably caught on already, is that um, you know, Zoom settings really make all the difference in your Zoom experience. I mentioned that a lot of these features you have to turn on in your web portal before you can really even en enable them in your meeting or your desktop client. So um, a lot of settings to help personalize your experience, but there's a lot of different places and ways for you to change those settings. So I would absolutely recommend logging into your web portal um, and reviewing the settings to see what may or may not already be turned on. Um, and then check your desktop client. And then even once you're inside the meeting, again, those, those different settings you can change. Um, and if you're unsure about something, open that Zoom Help Center. As I mentioned, it's a really great resource. I use it all the time. All right, so stay tuned for my next webinar. I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite tips and tricks um, not specifically related to Zoom, um, but they're just some of my favorite tools and resources and best practices for creating effective, engaging, and virtual experiences. They're tried and true practices um, for any meeting size or an event, um, and will help you get the most out of your time together. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Before you leave, don't forget to take the survey. I'll throw the link in the chat. And make sure that you're planning to join us on Facebook Live for our next non-webinar over onboarding and hiring digitally. You can even watch it later on YouTube. And if you have any questions about EAST or possible partnerships, please contact us. Uh, to learn more about what EAST students are doing in their community, follow us on social media at The EAST Initiative or visit our website at eastinitiative.org. Um, thank you again. I really enjoyed sharing these tools with you today. Thank you to my team for playing along, and I uh, will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you.